Okay, can we please have a warm welcome to Sampurn Earth from India. Thank you all. It's a great honor to be here and to present here. Uh, it's uh, like uh, we applied for GSVC uh, three years back. It was only an idea stage, so we have moved ahead, and it's a really an honor to be present in the finals and to present it. Should we start? <laughs> <laughs> this is not the standard. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Uh, so uh, we are working as an organization uh, for the last one and a half years, and we are working on this idea for a little more than three years. So as an organization, we want to transform waste management happens in developing countries and uh, and India especially. So we have started off with Mumbai. Mumbai is generally known as the economic capital of the country, but we also call it the waste capital of the country, considering the amount of waste is generated because of the amount of number of people lives. We'll just show you a flash how the dumping ground of Mumbai looks like. Uh, so this is placed at the heart of the city. There are three dumping grounds like this. The height of this dumping ground has reached out to 40 meters high. You can see the people working, the kind of unhygienic conditions and the hazardous conditions they are working on. And, uh, and the environmental pollutants that it releases to air and water are very obvious. So, uh, so what we see as a problem is we have waste generators who never segregate waste. Then there is a collection system and a dumping system, which is tremendously costly. So last year, the municipal corporation budget was more than $400 million, which is probably equivalent to the smaller GDP of the smaller states of India. So uh, what, and uh, there is hardly any research recovery even after spending this. So there is a small set of people we call waste pickers, rack pickers, who actually scatter in these dumping grounds to take out recyclables and sell it to the local middlemen and is driving the recycling industry alive. We call them invisible environmentalists. But at the same time, they are the people who are exploited the most, they are cheated by the middlemen, and they are exposed to the most unhygienic working conditions. And they are even outcasted from the society. They don't even belong to the lowest rung of the society. <coughs> so the solution that we see is a, we are trying to involve all the stakeholders inside this inside our boundaries, and we start with waste generators. So we go ahead to waste generators and try to provide solutions for them. So what is the solution? We actually go ahead and try to set up a decentralized waste management system and a segregation and processing unit at the source itself. So the, uh, why decentralized? It completely cuts off the transportation and the dumping cost, and, uh, and the outputs that it generate generated over there that is also used to supply supplement energy needs. Uh, one more thing that we really feel is like we involve the waste pickers who are otherwise outcasted, who would be otherwise displaced if, if this kind of solution comes up. So we involve them, we train them, we give them alternative livelihood skills, and we transform them to waste managers. So they are actually our workers like who actually run the plants that we set up. So the biodegradable waste, we process in biodigesters and composting units. Uh, the recyclable waste is collected and sent to recycling industry after further sorting, leaving a very small percentage of waste going to the dumping grounds. So what we do as a company is, uh, like, under the wet waste services, we sell biodigesters, we manufacture them, as well as composters, and we take up the operation maintenance of that too, where we involve the waste pickers and transform them into waste managers. Uh, under the so the target market for this is mainly residential, uh, large residences, bigger corporate units, corporate parks, hotel waste, market waste, so these are our target markets. Apart from this, we also have a driveway service where for people who generate recyclable waste in bulk, like banks, other corporate houses, and we collect that and we give recycled paper stationery back in return, something we have given to you on your table. Uh, Apart from this, we also have a value-add segment where we do waste audits, awareness campaigns, and also give impact assessment reports. So by doing this, we have attracted lots of corporate, corporate houses into our services who are doing this under the CSR and sustainability departments. So we have been able to associate ourselves with the biggest names in the country. We are working with Tata's. We are working with American companies also like ENY. We have also been able to associate ourselves with facility management companies like CBRE, JLL. They have a huge presence in Mumbai as well. So they are outsourcing their waste management part to us as well. Apart from this, we also have lots of banks who are doing, again, under their green banking initiatives. The environmental impact assessment and the products that we give out of waste, that actually adds value. Uh, uh, so this is a biogas plant uh, set up in an educational institute. So the, to set this up, there was an initial investment of around $3,000. We, we charge an operation maintenance fee of around $400 
per month, and we collect recyclables worth $2,000 over a year. So this biogas plant processes 1,000 kilos of biodegradable waste every day and gives two-cylinder equivalent gas every day. So this technology, we are associated with the Bhabha Atomic Research Center, which is one of the leading technology research centers in India. So we work with a scientist who is a, also Padma Shri. So we are developing this technology. So uh, the gas this, can, this plant generates is used for kitchen needs over there. Uh, this is small size composting, so backyard composting for housing societies. Right now we are doing a UNDP project where we are trying to replicate this kind of composting units throughout different small educational campuses in the city. Uh, this is the workers whom we work with, so they're waste managers now. So what we do with them is like they definitely get economic level upliftment. They get social securities insurances. Their health also improves. But what really happens is their social status gets better. They get integrated back to the society. And uh, like when they go to uh, their community and say we work in the Tata campuses, like it really makes a difference for them. Uh, this is a glimpse of the recycled paper stationaries. Uh, so, so over the last one year, we have been able to reach out to more than 50 clients. So this year, we want to go to at least 200. Uh, the revenue breakup is like 50% of our revenues come from selling these digesters and these composting units, while 20% comes from operating and maintaining them. 30% uh, comes from this recycled recycling business and barter system, and also selling the recyclables to the recycling market. Uh, so we have been able to raise around eighty thousand uh, dollars of funds over the last one and a half year, uh, and uh, we have been DBS Development Bank of Singapore is one of our most active partners to do this. They, their CSR department supports us. We have been able to achieve a earned revenue of around hundred thousand dollars, and we want to do it at least four times. And this is a very conservative number, considering that forty percent of our business for next year is already booked. So the impact we are trying to make is a triple dimensional one. So the economic value of uh, the products that we make out of waste adds value. Even the collection and transportation cost and dumping ground management costs are completely saved. The ec ecological are very obvious. So while the social being the waste pickers inclusion part and converting the waste managers actually stands, makes us stand apart from the other waste management companies. We also feel a decentralized waste management also raises awareness among people around waste management. When they see something is happening out of waste, the segregation levels also increase, and uh, they also get more aware around waste management. So over the last one year, we have been able to process more than 100 tons of waste. We have saved substantial carbon emissions and have employed 14 waste speakers along with us. Uh, so the roadmap, so we are working on IT and GPS support inside our services to get better, give better service. I, am, I used to be an IT engineer before, so I am working on it personally. Uh, we are also trying to create public-private partnerships where we transform localities into zero-waste patches. So right now we have been going to individual customers, but slowly we are developing partnerships with local cell bodies, smaller municipal corporation of smaller tier two cities, tier three cities, and transform them completely into zero-waste towns or zero-waste localities. Uh, so, considering only in Mumbai, like we have a scale-up opportunity of 2,000 times only in Mumbai. So, uh, having said that, like uh, we are also getting lots of interested people from other towns and other cities who want to implement our solutions. So we see a franchisee model coming up very soon. So where we give them network support, where we give them technology support, operational support, and also give them buyers for the outputs that generate our waste. Uh, so the founding team has been three, so we are working for a little more than three years together. Uh, we are all come from engineering backgrounds, and we did our master's in social entrepreneurship. Uh, we have a full-time management team of around 11 people backing ourselves. We just recently hired before coming to GSBC. So, <laughs> so we actually increased. So there are five people now, there are 11 people who come from entrepreneurial background, business development background, as well as management engineering backgrounds. Our board of directors is also a powerhouse, where we have uh, lots of uh, people who have been working in the sector for long. We have Ashoka Fellows. With us, we have technology developers. But the most interesting thing is like we have a former waste speaker on our board as well. She used to be a waste speaker 10 years back. Now she heads a cooperative of 1,500 waste because she's the president of that. So she's helping us to interact with the community more. Uh, so we have been winning business plan competition in the country <coughs> in a regular basis. Al Gore uh, competition was one of the highlights for this. Uh, local media has also been covering our 
work pretty well. So just a couple of weeks back, there is a, a, a star produced a thing called Satyam Vijayate, which has a viewership of almost 70 million people. So they showed our work as one of the best practices. I think I'm done. I will show a small clip of the episode. मुंबई में स्थित टाटा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ सोशल साइंसेज की कैंटीन में किसी भी अन्य कैंटीन की तरह खाना बनाते वक्त कुछ कचरा निकलता है कुछ खाना बच भी जाता है या खराब भी हो जाता है जहां आम कैंटीन इस तरह के कचरे को म्यूनिसिपैलिटी के हवाले कर देती है वहीं ये कैंटीन इसको सहेज कर रखती है इस कैंटीन के पिछले हिस्से में एक बायो प्लांट लगा है जहाँ बचे हुए खाने को थोड़ी सी प्रोसेसिंग करके डाल दिया जाता है यहाँ की रसोई अपने ही बचे हुए खाने ऐसी बनी गैस आरोप फिर ऐसी खाना पकाती है इस प्लांट का नाम है निसर्ग ऋण यानी प्रकृति का ऋण चुकाना और ये आर्थिक रूप से भी फायदे का सौदा है थैंक यू